ኡመጋን ተምራን ደስያ ከና ጀና ሰባክታ ቸክስቱን ሚሊታም የና ተስማይ ሽሪ ጉርዘይ ነማሃ ማኦም ቢሽኑ ፓዳይ ክርሽና ፕረስታ ቡተሌሺ ማክቲ ባክቲ በዳንተ ስዋሚ ኢቲናሚኔ ናማስተ ኢሰው ስዋቲ ዴቪ ጎልማሪ ፕቻሪ ኔ ኒቨርሴ ሰሱ ኒቨሪ ፓስቲያቲ ዴይ ሰታይነ ፈንቺካፓ ትሩብስቻ ክሪፓሰሉ ቤ በጃፕቲታናም ባብነ ቢዮ ባይሽና ቤ ቢዮ ነማሁ ነማሃ ሽሪ ክርሽና ቸይታንያ ፕሮቡንዲቲ አንንደ ሽሪ አድዌዲ ገዳዳረ ሲባሰሪ ጎር ባክተ ቪንደ Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So um, Srimad Bhagavatam Mamalam Puranam the glories of the supreme personality godhead presented in the most clear and most uh, com- comprehensive form is now known as Srimad Bhagavatam Srimad Bhagavatam uh, was given central a uh, focus by his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami shila prabhupada particularly when he was about to begin his mission of uh, traveling to the west uh we're coming up to that very glorious uh, ceremony in a few days we'll be honoring shila prabhupada's uh, appearance on the western shores of america western i mean the eastern shores of america the western and the height of western culture at the time and uh prabhupada's preparation for that was uh, a large amount was focused on um translating and giving his bhakti vedanta purports to the shrimad bhagavatam first canto he did that and he uh put together uh, a three volume set of the first canto in 200 copies when prabhupada embarked on his trip from uh, from calcutta when he reached one area in the travels before he hit the atlantic ocean that was in cochin um the books had been organized and delivered to prabhupada and put onto the boat at that time Prabhupada knew now felt that his mission was he had everything he needed in in order to bring in and begin this very what we say glorious and somewhat impossible mission of spreading Krishna consciousness to the western world and Prabhupada knew that he was going to meet a lot of opposition difficulties he was very much uh, overwhelmed with seeing the magnitude of what he was about to embark on but focused on the instructions of his spiritual master shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati he became determined to uh what we say accept all obstacles in bringing this uh krishna consciousness to the western world and he did it in a very powerful way and he emphasized the the uh, teachings of shrimad bhagavatam and having those books along with him prabhupad felt that he had everything he needed and now to begin that movement and when he arrived in america he emphasized uh, the glories of shrimad bhagavatam he spoke from shrimad bhagavatam he also made shrimad bhagavatam available to the western persons who had no knowledge <laughs> of uh, any uh, uh transcendental literature coming from the vedic culture practically if they had any knowledge they didn't have any understanding of it so prabhupad uh, understood the glories of shrimad bhagavatam the complete comprehensive understanding of this knowledge as presented by vyasadev so as a representative of shila vyasadev he took vyasadev's work and made it his uh, uh, focus of his mission to give shrimad bhagavatam to the western world in a very understandable way by adding his bhakti vedanta purports and those bhakti vedanta purports were the essence of his his devotion to krishna along with his very deep understanding after 
surveying and analyzing and observing the Western culture, he put together he put together Srimad Bhagavatam in a very, what we say, easily readable, yet very deep understanding of the nature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Prabhupada also writes, and there's one verse that he uh, refers to in the Srimad Bhagavatam, actually two verses. And one of the verses, it's in from Srimad Bhagavatam, verse Canto, um, chapter 5, verse number 10. And in that verse, it says, um, those words which do not describe the glories of the Lord, who alone can sanctify the atmosphere of the whole universe, are considered by saintly persons to be like unto a place of pilgrimage for crows. Since the all-perfect persons are inhabitants of the transcendental abode, they do not derive any pleasure there. And then Prabhupada uh, gave his purport describing the, uh, let me say, the problem with mundane literature and how it doesn't, it's simply a place for sense gratification. And it doesn't really en enhance the life of anyone. It simply takes them more and more into the entanglement of material energy. And then in the next verse, it is mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. On the other hand, that literature, which is full of descriptions of the transcendental glories of the name, fame, form, and pastimes of the Supreme, unlimited Supreme Lord, is a different creation, full of transcendental words directed towards bringing about a revolution in the impious lives of the world's misdirected society, civilization. Such transcendental literature, even though imperfectly composed, are heard, sung, and accepted by purified men who are thoroughly honest. And Prabhupada goes on to describe in the purport that when there is an emergency, and even though the people who are involved in the emergency may not be able to communicate with each other because of language differences, still, still the emergency, the mood of that emergency alerts other persons to take part in understanding what is that emergency, and then they act accordingly. So Prabhupada uses that in an example by explaining that there is a great need <laughs> in the misdirected lives of the present civilization due to impiety for this great literature. And although we are not perfect in presenting this literature, there is full of literary faults, still we are, we are confident that this message will be accepted and received by the leading men in the world and will change the heart naturally people in general will follow. So Prabhupada had great faith in Srimad Bhagavatam. Although you, you can see in those early editions, there were literary discrepancies, especially in the uh, matter of language, but still it didn't take away from the essence of the, the theme that was being presented. And that is to glorify the name, fame, form, qualities, pastimes, and everything in relationship to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And therefore, Prabhupada enthusiastically and made it his mission to bring this great literature, which is an eternal literature, describing the glories of the Lord to the Western civilization. And the glory of Srimad Bhagavatam is Prabhupada's touching of Srimad Bhagavatam, just like it's mentioned no listening to Marjus. just like it's mentioned that um sukadev goswami when he when he was speaking srimad bhagavatam to maharaj parikshit which is the theme of srimad bhagavatam the discussion between maharaj parikshit and sukadev goswami sukadev goswami being the narrator and Maharaj Pariksit being the 
the receiver who is asking questions based on what is being spoken, when he touched that same Srimad Bhagavatam, the word sukha is like parrot. It means the word parrot. So the analogy is given that when a parrot touches a particular fruit, and the example is given a mango, uh, that mango even becomes even sweeter simply by the touch of the beak of the parrot. So how much can we understand about Srimad Bhagavatam? It's all based on Srila Prabhupada's uh, giving that Bhagavatam to us in a realized way. And Prabhupada spent uh, practically every night during the time he was with us, uh, at least in the very later years, most of the later years, in the very early years, he was putting together his movement. But at one time he spent, he started to translate the verses from the Srimad Bhagavatam into the word for word uh, understanding in the English languages, giving the Devanagari, the original Sanskrit, and presenting his Bhakti Vedanta purport. So you see, along with the English translations, so you see each verse has five components to it, ending with Srila Prabhupada's purport, which is the realized understanding or the realized words of a self-realized soul who not only is giving us Srimad Bhagavatam, but is living Srimad Bhagavatam. So this Bhagavatam has made, been made even more <laughs> glorious and accessible. I think that is the most important part by the mercy of Srimad Srila Prabhupada. And uh, when and Prabhupada has said so many times in his discussions and his lectures, speaking directly about Srimad Bhagavatam, he said every subject matter that you can possibly think of is contained within Srimad Bhagavatam. It is complete. And although it's complete with all subject matters, all the subject matters are given in their ideal position. In other words, each of the subjects, whatever they are, are presented in the ideal way, which connects one to that subject in relationship to the glories and the activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And that is the glory of Srimad Bhagavatam. It's pure and it, in, 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 it heralds the nature of the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Prabhupada wanted us to read Bhagavatam every day <laughs> and to hear Bhagavatam from others, especially himself and others who are qualified to speak on Srimad Bhagavatam, because he was simply by doing that, in this pattern, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's statement that in, the, in, in essence, Krishna consciousness really comprises two major activities, and that is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, the uh, glorification of the Lord in transcendental sound vibration, which is the Yuga Dharma in this age, the means for self-realization. And along with that, the spirit of Srimad Bhagavatam, the message of Srimad Bhagavatam, and, and which will bring about a complete social and uh, Ecclesiastic, not ecclesiastical, but a complete social arrangement to the lives of everyone who practices devotional service. In other words, everything is there in Bhagavatam we need in order to live according to the message of pure devotional service and the understanding. And of course, the, the essence is the understanding of Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Mahaprabhu, there's one verse that glorifies Mahaprabhu uh, as non-different than Srimad Bhagavatam. And it's interesting to note, you'll see, in the very beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the first 60 pages, I believe, you'll find there is a very succinct and quite direct narration of the life of uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Prabhupada presented that as a prelude 
to Srimad Bhagavatam because what he's, he's trying to say is not only to glorify Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and give us knowledge of the Supreme Lord as he appears as a devotee to, glor to, uh, to preach Krishna consciousness throughout the world by spreading the, the Yuga Dharma, the chanting of the holy name of the Lord, but to, to, to give us the understand that here is living Bhagavatam. The Supreme Lord's life is the example of Bhagavatam in a day-to-day -day understanding of the life of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So the principle of Bhagavatam is also illustrated in the life of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is living Bhagavatam, as he is Krishna himself, in the form of teaching uh, the process of pure devotional service. So it's, uh, you can see how Prabhupada really thought out how to present this Bhagavatam in the most, uh, not only interesting, but complete way that it would get, that would be understandable for everyone and at the same time uh, appreciated by the, um, by the more intellectual class of people within society. And you'll see that there, is, there are many who came from those that particular background, who glorified Srila, Srila Prabhupada, Srimad Bhagavatam as the best of all spiritual scriptures coming from the Vedic culture. Uh, am I still audible there? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Good. So these are some of the points that we can illustrate. And, uh, and here we go. And to go a little bit further into that, um, we find that in our Krishna conscious society, unfortunately, um, and this is something that is not theoretical, it is actually understood by, by example, is that our movement does not really take Srimad Bhagavatam enough to heart. We need to read it more. We need to understand it more. We need to understand how to apply it in our life. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, I meet devotees who just don't read. I was at a, a group of devotees just the other day. There was about 100 devotees there. And I asked, uh, how many of you read every day of Srimad Bhagavatam? And I think two or three out of the hundred raised their hand. So people come to our classes, they uh, chant Hare Krishna, but they don't read. And if we don't read, especially Srimad Bhagavatam, which is everything you need to know about the transcendental science of Krishna consciousness. And it's not only the knowledge, but it's the application of the knowledge. Prabhupada takes it to that point where he teaches you what you need to know, and he also helps you understand how to apply it. Um, and so Prabhupada really uh, focused on the complete presentation of Bhagavatam, making it, uh, we say, easily receivable to all of us, but somehow or other, we don't take the time to read. And, and that's unfortunate. Of course, maybe we go to classes and that is very important. But reading is very poor within our society. It has been like that for years. And I don't know why, but it is. But once, uh, I'll, I'll tell a little personal experience I had with Bhagavatam, which happened to, to me about 25 years ago. Well, I think it was at least that long ago. Uh, I had sat down, I was reading Bhagavatam every day. Um, regularly, and uh, I remembered what Srila Prabhupada had responded to in a question that was asked uh, uh, when someone asked Srila Prabhupada, uh, uh, how can we associate with you once you leave? Prabhupada said, I'm in my books. <laughs> you read my books. Everything you need to know is in my books. And so uh, with that thought in mind, I was reading one day and 
um, I was reading for quite a long time. In other words, I had been reading for more than a, more than an hour and a half, two hours, just regular reading, Sri Mad Bhagavatam, quietly, not out loud. And uh, at one point, something quite uh, amazing happened, you might say. I can use the word amazing, or you might say unusual or informative. Um, uh, all of a sudden, during the reading, uh, I was not reading the words anymore. I was hearing the words being spoken by Prabhupada as I was reading from the pages. In other words, the words were being spoken to me as if I was listening to Srila Prabhupada's voice speaking these words. And I could hear his voice speaking the same thing. And then I understood, oh yes, Prabhupada said, I am in my books, read my books. And particularly in Srimad Bhagavatam. So that went on for you know a significant amount of time, maybe a few minutes or more. And then at one point it stopped. And that never happened to me again. But I think what Prabhupada wanted to show me, yes, I'm in my books. Just read my books. I'm here. <laughs> you can get to know me and you can get to know the science of Krishna consciousness simply by reading my books. And those who read Srimad Bhagavatam particularly and have a working knowledge of the philosophy of Bhagavatam and the understanding of Krishna through that knowledge, they're, they're fixed in Krishna consciousness. They're not going to fall down. If they undergo difficulties, they'll always pull through because that knowledge of Srimad Bhagavatam uh, is a, is a lifesaver in this uh, struggle to become uh, what we say god conscious in this age of, of kali which is fraught with so many difficulties so this message of bhagavatam and the chanting of the holy name these two uh, very powerful forms of transcendental uh, activities are the essence of what Srila Prabhupada wanted to give us when he gave us the, the complete science of bhakti yoga we have uh, this great uh, uh, literature available. And as it mentions in Srimad Bhagavatam, that Srimad Bhagavatam is the literary incarnation of Krishna himself. As Krishna appears in different forms of himself, which are non-different than himself, he appears also in transcendental sound. And particular, there's one verse, I think it's the first canto, third chapter, verse number 43, where it says that um, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, has now departed the world, but he has left himself in the form of this transcendental literature. So in that verse, it, it, it illustrates that Srimad Bhagavatam and Krishna are actually non-different. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati takes the time and with his deep understanding of Srimad Bhagavatam, he illustrates that this Bhagavatam is, is compared to the deity of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And as we approach the deity, we also approach the transcendental message in the same way, starting with the first canto and gradually, carefully reading, understanding, hearing, and going verse by verse and gradually moving towards the complete understanding after nine cantos. When Maharaj Parikshit was hearing Srimad Bhagavatam from Sukadev Goswami, um, at one point Sukadev Goswami stopped after giving Maharaj Parikshit nine cantos of the Bhagavatam. And he referred to Maharaj Parikshit, he said, uh, would you like a break? <laughs> Would you like to take, uh, you know, a little rest, something? And uh, uh, Maharaj Pariksit started to become more enlivened. He said, "No, actually, I've been actually waiting for this for this part of the Bhagavatam. Please, now was the time to hear and chant the glories of the Supreme Lord and Sri Vrindavan Dham." So. Uh, he had prepared his consciousness by carefully listening to 
the, the first nine cantos. And then the essence of the Bhagavatam, you might say, is the smiling face of the Lord, as we use that comparison, that the transcendental body of the Lord is compared to the different cantos of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And then the tenth canto is the smiling face of the Lord, which is Krishna in the complete uh, uh, knowledge of himself in Sri Vrindavan Dham as the transcendental cowherd boy who is the sinosaur or the focus of all of the residents of Sri Vrindavan Dham in pure loving service. So this, this transcendental literature is so glorious and so deep. What we have here on this particular planet given to us by the Acharyas, and Jiva Goswami mentions that Bhagavatam in the higher planets has one, one billion verses. Here we're, we're getting um, you know 18,000 verses. So Bhagavatam is extensive because the glories of Bhagavatam are uh, uh, unlimited. When Srila Prabhupada was in Germany, he had met one very interesting professor who, was a, who wanted to uh, speak to Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada was there and it's mentioned in one morning walk. And uh, his name was Professor Durkheim. And they were talking and Prabhupada brought up the subject of Srimad Bhagavatam. And then he started to glorify Bhagavatam. And then he mentioned that in this, in this great scripture, there are 18,000 verses. And, uh, and then he went on to say, and it takes about one month to understand each verse. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was quite, you know, phenomenal to hear. It takes one month to hear and then Prabhupada turned to his disciples and said, how long is that? And one devotee was quite quick and said, that is 18, that is 1,500 years, Prabhupada. <laughs> and Prabhupada said, yes, you, there is, you have enough to read. <laughs> There's so much information, you cannot exhaust this knowledge, even if you spend your whole life reading it. And one who becomes absorbed in reading Bhagavatam and understanding Bhagavatam and also speaking Bhagavatam to others will, uh, will ultimately come to the platform of pure devotional service. Everything is there in Srimad Bhagavatam. So it's called Amalam Puranam. It is called Paramahansa Samhita. And even Bhagavatam itself glorifies itself as being the best of all religious scriptures. It is the Amalam Puranam means it is pure. There's no, in the second verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam, it says, Dharma Projito Kaitava Paramar Nimatsarana Satam. In that particular verse, it mentions that Bhagavatam, uh, as Prabhupada says, kicks out all forms of cheating religion which are based on dharma, artha, kama, and moksha, the, the purusharthas, the activities of the conditioned souls in the material world, which we find uh, throughout many religious script, scriptures presents a combination of religiosity, spiritual principles, and material success as the goal of life. But not in Bhagavatam, you won't find that. In that therefore, it says, yeah, kaitavo means it kicks out all of these cheating. Mm -hmm. Dharma, projito means to kick out, and kaitavo means cheating. Bhagavatam gets right to the essence to hear and chant and glorify and serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the sunam bodham, the principle of the highest realm of spiritual understanding. And so, um, so devotees in our movement have been studying it, reading it, and presenting it. Some, some of the more scholarly devotees have studied it and read and presented it in different ways in order for us to even get, go deeper into the finer aspects of Srimad Bhagavatam. So we have a, 
great amount of transcendental knowledge available. And uh, we can spend the whole life reading Srimad Bhagavatam and simply find transcendental happiness and, trans and spiritual fulfillment. And the most important thing is we can learn about and when we learn about the, we can learn about the supreme personality of Godhead, and the principle of devotion is uh, fortified by the knowledge of the supreme personality of Godhead. The more we know about Krishna, the more we are attracted to Krishna. The more we are attracted to Krishna, the more we become attached to Krishna. The more we become attached to Krishna, the more we engage in his devotional service and actually realize Krishna through devotional service uh, supplemented and what we say fortified by the transcendental knowledge given to us in Srimad Bhagavatam. So Bhagavatam is the best. Uh, there is no doubt about that. There is no literature that can come anywhere close to Srimad Bhagavatam in its glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Hare Krishna.